get from start to finish, but uh, that'll just be my springboard for next week. How's that? I, I titled this, uh, His Love is Forever. His Love is Forever. I think these two souls this morning kind of describe to us that God's love is forever. And, and if we if we know Him, and He knows us, then we know that He's coming again one day. Yeah. Praise God. We want to read some scripture here. Let's get started with that. Uh, we're going to go to Luke chapter 21. So we're going to read verses 25 and 26. Then we're going to jump over to uh, John chapter 14 and read some more scripture over there, 45 through 47. Um, Luke chapter 41. Verses 25 and 26. So stand with us if you want for the reading of God's Word today. If you can't, if you can't stand, that's perfectly okay. Yes. But here's what it says in Luke chapter 21, verse 25. It says, There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves Roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then we're going to go over to John chapter 14. That's one of the uh, keynote chapters of the Bible. It has many good things to say about Jesus Christ and about the life that he has given us. Amen. So John chapter 14, we're going to read verse 25 and 36. 36. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. That's in Luke. That's and when we get to, I think we're going to get to uh, John chapter 14, very sweet. Um, I'm sorry, what? John chapter 14. I apologize. Verses 45 and 46, it says, These things I have spoken unto you, being yet present with you. Jesus was walking with them, talking with them. He was alive in the flesh. And he said, These things I have spoken to you, being present with you. Uh, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance. <coughs> Whatsoever I have said unto you, you're going to remember this. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Father God, we thank you for the word this morning. For the word is powerful and sharp than a two-edged sword. It pierces the sun. Bone and marrow, God, it goes deep. God, it goes deep into our soul. It goes deep into our personality and our lives. We ask you today, God, to open up our hearts to receive what we can this morning of this word, that you might bless us, encourage us, fortify our gates, O oh God, with your grace and with your love. We ask it in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. 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 You can be seated. God bless you. You see, it's Jesus who died and rose again. Jesus who died and rose again. He's, he's going to come again. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. How many of you have ever used that little perverse coin that says it's not over till the skinny lady says? <laughs> Kidneys. <laughs> that describe the condition of the world before He comes again. And we've gone through those. In the last several weeks, we've talked about the Scriptures that tell us what it's going to be like just before Jesus comes back again. Uh, we're living in that day. We're living in that hour. We're living in those seconds when Jesus Christ could come back at any moment and take His church home. What a glorious thought for those who are saved. Our text today describes 
distress, perplexity, and fear. Does that sound like anything that's going on in our world today? Does that sound like anything you've heard on the news this last week? Everybody hates everybody. There's no peace anywhere. Everything is your problem, not my problem. You're racist. You're this. You're that. You're everything there is that's wrong. God said that's the way it's going to be when he comes back to get his church. So here's my, my caution to you. Because he said also, when these things begin to take place, look up because your redemption draweth nigh. He's coming back to a church that is without spot or wrinkle. I'm glad that we're not involved every day in those kinds of activities that's going on around our country today in person. But we are involved in them in our psyche. Because they trouble us. They bother us. We watch the news. I quit watching the news. But we'll watch the news and we see all of the trials and the, and the riots and, and all of the... It's not about equality. It's about who can get the most stuff out of the store in time. It, it's about who can break the biggest window of the biggest building in time. It's about stirring up hatred. It's about stirring up dissension. It's about making neighbor hate neighbor, father hate child, child hating father. Does that sound familiar? If you've read the Bible, you know those things are all in there. And those are the things that's coming to pass. And the Bible describes all of these. It's an epidemic or a pandemic that's here today. But... But holy spirit come quickly because his spirit equips us to overcome fear, Janet. We don't have to worry about these things. The Holy Spirit is here as a comforter, as a guide to lead us in peace through the duration of this time into our world to come. As Jerry so adequately said, Jesus is coming back. He's coming back. And He's coming back for a church that is not filled with fear. That is not filled with hatred. That is not filled with doubt. He's coming back to a church that's looking for Him. John 14, 16. You know, when we're distressed, the Holy Spirit gives us comfort. Think about this. And I will pray the Father, and He shall give to you another comfort, that He may abide in you for ever. This thing's not for a weekend, folks. That's right. Praise God. It's forever. Yeah. When He comes in, and He's there. The only way he will leave is if you push him out. Right. If you begin to go back to your old ways of living, your old ways of thinking, if you begin to say, I don't know if God is even real, I don't know if I believe in a God, then he's not in you. Because he is God in the third person. Amen. And he is ever present with believers on the face of this planet. I, 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 I'm sorry that non-believers can't have that. I, I'm sorry that that's just not a part of who they are. Because if they could have that for one day and really think about what it's done to their lives and to their hearts, to their families, they would want it every day. See, the definition of distress is this. And afflicted. And afflicted. Wretched or exhausted condition. A state of extreme need. Well, we've seen all of those in the past several months here. We need all of those things, Sharon. Becky, I'm glad when you sent me those little text messages in the mornings. It says, good morning. 
We love you. Those brighten my day. Because I know that God is at work in her life to try to change my life. Maybe I woke up in a bad mood. Maybe I woke up with something distressing in my life. Let's send some of those Pastor Ron and Sister Teresa's way. They're putting up with a dad and a mom that's suffering from dementia and Alzheimer's. I pray for them every day. God, they need your grace. They need your peace. See, they knew mom and dad, but mom and dad loved the Lord Jesus Christ with all their heart. Uh, I've heard Teresa say this so many times. My dad was a fantastic man of prayer. He could pray the most eloquent prayers, and he loved God so much. But you know, when these things come on, all of that goes out the window. They can't remember who they are, let alone that God loves them. I don't understand that. I, I don't understand that. But I know that someday we will. You know, our greatest need in distress is comfort. We need comfort when we're stressed out. We need somebody that we can talk to that hears us that says, fear not for I am with thee. Fear not, I'm here. I will never leave you nor will I ever forsake you. You see, the things that are going on in our world today cause people to say, hmm, I, I think I'm just going to end it all. I can't stand going through this. And they go to their rooms and one way or another, whether by drug overdose or the help of Smith and Wesson, they think they end their problems. That is not the end of any problem. That's the beginning of problems. Because when you take your life without Jesus Christ, you spend eternity in hell. There's no purgatory, folks. There's no place to go but to heaven or to hell. You see, if God sent His Holy Spirit to be our comforter, and we need a friend, then why don't we call on Him? If we need a friend, He's a friend like no other. He's a friend that will never turn you away. He's a friend that when you're talking will not say, oh, shut up for a minute. Let me tell you the way I feel. He's a friend that knows your heart. That when you're so distressed and you're so upset that you can't even form words to pray, He makes intercession for you. He prays according to your groaning and to your anguish and to your loss. He knows how to pray for you. Look at John chapter 16, verse 33. You know, it says that in this world, we're going to have trouble. Huh? In this world, we will have trouble. All you men say, you married men say, amen. <laughs> tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. That's Jesus. Amen. We know that He overcame the world because He appeared to the disciples before He made His final ascension to heaven, and He gave them more instructions. He gave them more discipline. He gave them more power, more authority, more determination to be everything God called you to be. Sometimes we go through things we don't think we, we didn't think we would ever go through. And then there's times that we go through things that we didn't think we could. 
But at the end of it, we found out that God is sufficient. We found out that God never fails. We found out that in my most hard distress, He's my comforter. He's my light in the darkness. He's my hope when everything else around me is depleted. My friends, my loved ones, they no longer, no longer come to me because I'm so hurt, so distressed. Now they just think, I'm just going to stay away from them. No, that's the time to be what you're supposed to be as a Christian. Not an accuser, not an agitator, but a lover of their soul. That's what Jesus is. He's a lover of your soul. Whether you like it or not, He wants you to be faithful. But we know that we never experience troubles alone. God is always there. He is always there. He's just a breath away. You can call your friends or call your church and they will immediately, having heard your request, send it out on a multi-call where everybody prays for you, where your needs can be met, where God can comfort your sorrow, where God can give you peace when you thought there would never be peace again. When we lose a loved one in death, when others turn against us, when things just seem out of control, we need God. We need God. We've got Bobby Joe and little Richie back there today. I want you to know, Bobby Joe, I pray for you every day. Richie, I pray for you every day. Your dad was so excited that he gave his heart to Jesus Christ and that he was going to go to heaven. He wanted to live. He told us right here. Pastor, I want to live longer. But if it's God's will that I go home, I'm ready now. That takes courage to say that. Especially when you're facing cancer or some disease that's going to take your life. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready, I'm okay. How can you be okay with dying? You can't be okay with dying unless you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. Amen. I've had people in my lifetime tell me, don't worry, buddy, I'd give my life for you. No, they wouldn't. No, they wouldn't. They, they wouldn't do that. I thought I was real cool one time. My best friend was getting in trouble with that guy much bigger than him. We were at a restaurant and I jumped up and grabbed the bottle and broke it. Went after the guy that was picking on him. I said, I'm not going to let you hit, hurt him. I'm not going to let you kill him. And I thought, how dumb was that? How dumb was that? He might have just pulled a gun and shot me. And he would have been totally illegal in doing so. Now you know what I do? Now I call on Jesus. Amen. Now I call on Jesus. He's my ever-present help in time of trouble. Yes. Yes. It doesn't matter that the old devil, my wife had a, a, a visitation from him one time when my, my firstborn was about to come into this world and we lived in a mobile home and in the middle of the night she woke me up in a panic sweating. The devil had come into that room to visit her. He wanted my son, my firstborn. And she cried out, we weren't saved then, and she cried out, Jesus help me! And she said, he was gone in an instant. I want you to go buy me a cross. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how much it is. I don't care how cheap it is. I want you to go buy me a cross because they're going to see that I stand on the cross from now on. Wow. You see, sometimes it takes 
horrifying encounters to realize that God is everything that we need. He's my hope. He's my shelter. He's my fortress. He's my high tower. I can look out over my enemies now and say, can't touch me, can't touch me. Like the little monkey sitting in the tree. Jesus, Mr. Alligator, can't catch me. But along came the old devil. The alligator was quiet as could be. We thought we were in Pleasant Tree. And one little monkey sitting on the tree. The devil came and snatched one away. It comes that quick. It comes that quick. It's so important that we live every day with everything that's in us for Jesus Christ. There's no room for hesitation. I'm quickly going to go through these and have you out here by quarter after. I haven't seen my wife. Thank you, honey. I know she's listening to me. Look at John chapter 14, verse 26. The Comforter, comforter which is the Holy Ghost, and the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. He was talking to the disciples and he was talking to us. Everything that God has ever spoken to you in the, in the world of Jesus Christ, He will never leave you, He will never forsake you. He is that friend. He will always be nigh thee, even in thy mouth. He will protect you. He will love you. He will heal you. And he desires you. Perplexed. Finding no way out. Call on Jesus. He'll be there. You feel trapped? You need direction from the Lord? You'll be there. Call on him. John 14, verse 47 gives us everything we need. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives you by you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. I'll be with you. When you're fearful, the Holy Spirit will give you faith. Luke 21, 26. When men's hearts are failing, when they're failing for fear, he's there. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth where the powers of heaven shall be shaken. I'm telling you, today is the day to be looking for Jesus. Today is the day to get your life right with God. You can play cards in the corner of your closet, the cards of life that pull you away from the things of God and think that He doesn't know it, neither does anybody else. But He's a God that is an all-seeing God. He's a God that's an all-knowing God. Here's your hope. He's an all-caring God, too. Yes, yes. But men's hearts fail for fear. He's there. You see, faith increases and fear decreases when he's on the picture. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I'm going to stop there because there may be somebody here today that needs something from I just have that feeling that there's somebody here today saying, I wish I could have that. I wish I could keep that. I've come to it before. It just goes out as quick as it comes in. If you're here today and you need Jesus Christ in your life, in your heart, Raise your hands and have a prayer for you. I 